would like to say thank you once again to USN for America. Gave me a link to a vessel finder location of a ship, the USNS Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is the same class of ship as the Bowditch we covered in yesterday's video. The Bowditch was the ship that had its uh, drone seized by the Chinese back in 2016. It's currently located in the Panama Canal, moored. Now there's six vessels in this class, and thank you again USN for America. Um, that link sent me down a road that basically created today's video, so I have said it before, I'll say it again, the contributors here are absolutely the best on YouTube, bar none. Um, here's the link, um, Panama Canal, the uh, little square is where the Pathfinder is, setting on the Pacific side. Now, this is an up-to-date, January 5, um, 1900 hours track of where this is. So this is real time. Now, there are six vessels in this class. The Pathfinder, uh, there was the Sumner, but apparently it's uh, not being used anymore. The Bowditch, the Henson, the Heason, the Mary Sears, and the Mori. So I thought, well, let's just do our homework and let's see where these ships are. Let's see if we can find anything that might lead us down a road. And I did find one thing they had in common. Now, here is the Mary Sears, I believe. I have this right. No, though, this is the USNS Mori. Now, the Mori is, uh, as of 27 December 2017, was up off the coast of Alabama. So that puts it in this hemisphere. The Mary Sears, however, has not reported her location since 14 August of 2017. That's right around the time that the John McCain had the issue, and strangely enough, the Mary Sears was in the region. Kind of strange. Now here's the Henson. Now the Henson has reported its last known position 6 November, so not a very long time ago, but still, what is that, December, January, two months ago. But it's up here in, uh, right where all this happened with the Fitz. Sagami Wan, here's Okuska, and that's where it is. The Bowditch itself hasn't reported since last May. And last May, it said it was up here in Lake Ontario. So I'm not sure what that means, but it got me thinking. It got me thinking about something that happened under Obama. And nobody thought much about it then. But I think in today's context, it was a much bigger deal. Now, this article <clears throat> talks about, now this was when Obama was a lame duck. It was after the election, yes, last year, but before the swearing-in. This was uh, uh, December 18th, 2016. Now, this is talking about what we spoke of, the issue with the Bowditch. But there had been other issues, and prior to that, during his administration, um, a lot of people forgot about the U.S. Navy EP-3 over the South China Sea. Happened only a few months before 9-11, where they... Uh, knocked down one of our ships, they uh, took the crew prisoner, held them for 11 days, they disassembled the plane, uh, sent it back on a boat. Um, in September 2002, China's media claimed a Chinese fishing boat, and we keep seeing this pop up, intentionally rammed the boat itch in the Yellow Sea to disable its sonar. In March 2009, Chinese craft tried to sever the towed sonar array from the USNS Impeccable, international waters. Now this is a little bit different kind of ship, but it's basically has the same idea. It's a it's a surveillance ship. The victorious impeccable sister ship was subject to extreme harassment in March and May of 2009. There have been numerous Chinese intercepts of US Navy and US Air Force planes and vessels since then, including a near collision in December 2013 involving the USS Cowpens, an Arleigh Burke class destroyer, a missile cruiser in the South China Sea. It is funny that this is we've got surveillance and destroyers. The conduct continues because the U.S. does not exact costs on China. Worse, American administrations have rewarded Beijing for unjustifiable actions. Um, the Bush White House apologized for the thing with China, agreed to compensate China. Um, Obama adopted Bush playbook. Um, here we go. 
Listen to this. The Obama administration unfortunately adopted the Bush playbook. One month after the impactful and victorious incidents in March 2009, the White House sent the Chief of Naval Operations and a missile destroyer, the USS Fitzgerald, to China to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Navy. One month after that gesture, the friendship to Beijing, the Chinese harassed the victorious again. Imagine that very strange so here it talks about the policies that have just been continued by the current administrator that that Obama had regarding China even though he promised to label them a currency manipulator but another video for another day um, talking about the president thing it's irrelevant but but it talks about this issue with the US and China and their sovereignty over these man-made islands and we have shown that clearly now all of the events of this past summer have been tied to these cable locations. The one off of Triton Island, we showed that. The one off of Subic Bay showed that. The Fitzgerald. The, um, the sailor went overboard. I can't think of the name right now. The, uh, the other destroyer, the one that was off Triton Island. Um, it just ran out of my head. I can't remember the name of it now, but so, but yeah, then we had the issue with Normandy here, over a cable. And so this is more than likely an issue with China. And this article, going back quite a ways, I think pretty much illustrates that. But that thing with the Fitzgerald, I find more than a little bit coincidental, that that was a ship that went over there to celebrate this issue with the Navy and then almost gets sunk. So... Anyway, that's what this today's video is going to be about, is that we have an issue now where vessels used for surveillance or for interdiction are have were silently basically attacked over a six-month period starting in May of 2017 and ending in August. And then, of course, we have the Jimmy Carter, the submarine that happens to deal with things on the seafloor, mysteriously show up back here home port in Washington flying the Jolly Roger and it all went away and I think that should be the most one of the most important things you look at if you believe what the Navy said about this issue that it was a training issue and that it was just something where they needed to address the problems with the training and the uh, ability of the watchstanders it wouldn't have gone away Immediately, it wouldn't have just been this rash of incidents that all happened basically in one fleet during one tiny itty bitty time. And I, I've tried to hammer that point before, but the reason I brought this back up is is this issue with the canal. I think is going to be the next one. Um, SubmarineCable.com. If you guys want to go there, HighSutton.com. There is an article there as well that talks about. Um, narco subs and I think that's going to be our next uh, video we're going to cover this and the ability of these tiny submarines to go undetected and how they're going to be a problem in this hemisphere very very shortly a lot of political stuff going on in uh, Venezuela right now and it's getting too late in the video to bring it up but basically the idea is this the sanctions have not worked the people of Venezuela have rallied and they are now taking care of themselves. Um, they've set up communes, they're doing um, barter system, and their own private communal economy, communal currency, we've covered. And there are almost a million Bitcoin miners in Venezuela now, and called it, well, not Bitcoin, I'm sorry, it's, a, it's called the Petro. It's still a cryptocurrency. But it's being backed by the 300 billion barrels of untapped oil in Venezuela and the Russians have now pretty much laid claim and have allied themselves with the Venezuelans and this is going to be the next stop the Panama Canal and this issue with the Chinese is going to dovetail right with it so anyway I hope everyone has a great weekend and we are going to stay on this issue but thank you once again USNS for America um, excuse me USN for America for putting us down that road and showing us the next direction we need to go. I very much do appreciate everything from the contributors of this channel. 
they are by far the best around and we will continue the investigation. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.